Thank you. So I'm going to talk about introspection, this unique ability that we have to examine and observe our own internal thought processes. And this notion that underlines our use of words like mind, self, thought, or feeling. And I'm going to claim that this is not at all a trivial concept. In fact, philosophers like Carl Jaspers claim that over the thousand years before the Christian era, in this period called the Axial Age, there was a dramatic shift in the way people thought about themselves and their place in the world. It was a period where a lot of philosophies and religions, modern philosophies and religions, were created. And people left, fortunately for us, a big written record of this. So a lot of uh, people have studied this written record, and I'm going to talk about a couple of, first a couple of examples uh, from books, for example, from the Homeric Tales, from the Iliad, where Homer tells us things like, and the uh, Apollo drives Prince Hector back to battle. Generations of men are just like leaves, in the and the wind moves them. Fear Oa kills the wrath of heaven. And only a few years later, and telling about a story that happened a little bit later, suddenly he says, oh, how shameless the way the immortals blame the gods. Or some things you think for yourself, some things God will put into your mind. So you know what the fuck? He was just saying, we we're just leaves in the wind, and suddenly it's all our fault. In the Old Testament, Noah is this entity that just follows commands from God. And the wrath of God will come down on the sinners, and you will be punished. And suddenly in the New Testament, there's this mob coming together to stone an adulterous woman. And here comes hippie Jesus. And he's like, well, you know what? Who is the sinner here? If you're a sinner, throw a stone. So he's saying, I'm not going to punish the sinners. You should examine your own sin. You should examine your own conscience. So this brings me to my favorite respectable crackpot theory. This theory that comes from Julian James from Princeton University, 1970s. He actually thought that there was a change in the structure of the brain, happening as recently as the 3,000 years before the Christian era, where the two brain hemispheres were not connected the way they are now. And what we would now call introspective thought, people back then felt as it were hallucinations or God's voices. I don't subscribe really to this. I, I, lovingly called it crackpot theory, but with some colleagues we did set up to explore whether this drift, this change, this dramatic change in introspection really happened, and as computer scientists, the way we know how to do this is to try to quantify it. So fortunately, again, we have all these books available in the Internet Art Class Archives of Classics. So the first question is, what makes a text introspective? How can we assign a number to how introspective one text, piece of text is? And a lot of computational linguists have thought about it. There is this main concept that words about related things tend to appear together. So if you had a list of all the books and all the text in the world, and a list of all the words in the dictionary, and you just marked which words appear together in which books, through some magic called dimensionality reduction, computer scientists have come to this method, this math or algorithmic trick, to just extract from that a cloud of meaning, a, cl a semantic space. A space where words that are close by in this cloud, like dog, cat, mouse, share some sort of meaning, and they are apart from mind and thought. So we can grab a piece of text, count how far each word in the text is from the word introspection, and assign some number, some value of introspection to things like um, the Confessions of St. Augustine, as opposed to my, uh, Charlie Sheen. So I'm going to show you a few plots where whatever is down is less introspective, whatever is up is more introspective, and on the x-axis you're going to see the progress of time. And we're going to start, start with the Bible. Uh, in the Bible, we quantified each book of each of the Old and New Testament, and also the Confessions of St. Augustine, which is recognized as like, heavily introspective, and you can see this increase as time goes by. In fact, within each book of the Bible, there seems to be a tendency to increase in introspection. Then we move to Greece, where we can see that the Iliad is less introspective than the Odyssey, and then there is this growth in introspection as the, as the Greek society develops. <clears throat> so, of course, after Greece, we move on to Rome, and we observe something funny. Apparently, the Romans didn't learn anything from the Greeks. <laughs> <laughs> they just forgot everything they had learned, <clears throat> but suddenly they follow the same path introspection grows. So we think that there is a cultural and social process going on. It's not just this, you know, just linear increase. So we looked at the 20th century, and we actually see a significant drop in introspection in the text of the 20th century during World War I, World War II, and then, of course, the 60s, and introspective growth, uh, introspection grows out a lot. Psychoanalysis, poetry, and all that. So introspection is a cultural object. 
It's a way of describing our mental processes and our place in the world, and as such it evolves. And societies can become more or less introspective depending on the level of upheaval and the situation uh, that they are going through. Thank you. Thank you.